Hello, and welcome back to our continuing episodes of worked exercises for the book Python for Informatics, Exploring Information. I'm your author and tour guide, uh, Dr. Charles Severance. As always, these materials are copyright, uh, Creative Commons attribution, and I look forward to ways that you can improve on this work. This material is a supplement to my www.pythonlearn.com, which is uh, my supporting website for Python Learn, uh, Python for Informatics. And it has installation and other kinds of support that can help you get started. So for this particular exercise, it really comes from our dictionaries example, and we're going to try to figure out the most common word. And in this one, we're going to deal with uh, some really simple text files where the words are just words and we're not going to worry about lines or skipping lines or anything. So we're just going to do words um, and, and so we'll do this thing. So if we look at this program, there's really four basic parts to the program. Um, one is the first part is actually reading the program, and this is a little different pattern than uh, other things that we've done. Um, and and that's be, we're going to read the whole file. And so this is the we're, instead of doing a for loop here, we are going to read the entire file. So we're going to ask the user for the file name, and then open the file name that to type in. So you know here's the we're asking the user for a file name, open the file. But then we're going to do handle dot read. Now, if you recall, handle.read, normally we would write a for loop that would loop through each line and strip and split and, and whatever. What we're going to do here is say, you know, read this whole thing. We know that these files are pretty small. Read the whole thing in into a string. Now, the key thing is, is that we'll read all the lines in, and the new lines at the end of the, at the line, there's a new line. But all this will be read in, all the lines and the new lines. And the nice thing about this is the new lines form white space, and so they will give a word break bef before the between the last word on the one line and the first word on the next line. I'll talk about that a bit more when we're actually looking at some stuff. We're going to split it into words, which means we're going to make a very long list, which is all the words in the entire file, not just the words on a line, which is some of the other examples that we've used. But again, we know these files that we're playing with are relatively small, and they fit in the memory of Python. So we're just going to do simple, crude, you know, read the whole thing in as a string, split it on white space, new lines included. And now we're going to write a very simple dictionary loop that we're going to create a dictionary, and we're going to go through the word. Now this, this word is our iteration variable, of course. And words is all the words in all the lines of the text. We're going to use the get pattern. So if the word exists, whatever word we're looking at, we will get it and add one to it. And if it doesn't, we'll just use the default value and add one. So this is effectively the same as setting it to one the first time we see a word. Then we're going to write a simple maximum list. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a big word variable that we're going to start as none, which is the word that is the largest and how many there are. And then we're going to do a loop with two iteration variables. We're going to go through our you know, our dictionary will be word comma count. You know, the word will map to the count. The word will be the key, count will be the value. So we use counts items to get that list of tuples back. And basically, if we're on the first one, big count being none, or if the count is greater than big count, then we're going to remember the word, and we're going to remember the count, and then this loop will go through all the words, and at the end, we just print out big word and big count. So that basically is the... Um, the outline of what we're going to do. And when we'll run it, we'll run it with a couple of different files, words.txt and clown.txt. OK, so let me clear this and get out. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to cheat and put a few of the lines in. We'll, we'll actually write the whole thing. OK, so we can say goodbye to that now. Um, so, so I'm going to have to get my data files, and I will uh, go to pythonlearn.com. Go under the book. And the code samples. Actually, this is just files mostly. Maybe I shouldn't call it code, but and I'm going to grab the clown file. So this the clown file is going to be um, from the lecture. The clown ran after the car. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to put it in my folder called dictionaries. 
and then I'll hit back and I'll go down to the file called words.txt and this is the first three paragraphs <clears throat> first three paragraphs of the, the book and we're going to count the most common word there and I'll do file save as and put words there right in the dictionaries folder so now I've got my data and I can get rid of this and so if I take a look at my dictionaries dictionaries folder I see that I got clown.txt and word.txt and so now I'm gonna say um, I'll save this and I'll call this thing um, uh, lots lot many words my common word I'll call it common.py. What the heck? Keep these things short. Okay, so if I take a look at in here now, I've got, oops, I saved it to the wrong place. File. Come back. File. Save as. Where did I save it? I have no idea where I saved it. But I will save where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be in dictionaries, and I'll call it common.py. That's why I was check, right? There it is, common.py. And now I'm going to go into that. Go into my desktop, dictionaries, and there I've got common.py and words.txt, and we'll just run it. And uh, I'll tell it to do clown.txt. Now it didn't do anything because I haven't printed anything out. It actually did read it. So, um, so let's take a look here. I'm going to print len of text and I'm going to print the first um, well, 40 characters text up to but not including 40 so that's what I'm going to do here just to see this and I'll do clown again so the length of text is 106 characters and, and that is exactly the size of the file. It read the whole file. If I do ls minus l, it shows clown.txt having 106 characters. So it read into handle.read, read into the variable text 106 characters. And the first 40 are just those things. The clown ran up to car, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So now this entire file, clown.txt, has been split. So I'm going to print len of words. So how many words did I get in that split? And then I'll print the words themselves. Oops. Clown.txt. So I ran, it, I, ran, I ran in 106 characters, but then I broke it into words, and there's 24 words, and then here is my list of words. Okay? So I split the entire file into words at this point, and now I have a big list. Now if I do the same thing with um, words.py, I'm at words.txt, it, it read 1170 characters, and here's the first characters, and then I broke it into words, and it was 210 words. Now, um, let me change this ever so slightly. So it prints the first uh, 100 characters. And I'll show you something. Words.txt. Okay. So it printed the first 100 characters. Let me, let me split this into two print statements to make it even clear. Run again. Words.py. Ah! words.txt clear my screen so the first print this print right here is 1170 and then I print the first 100 characters this is that first 100 characters what you're sort of not seeing here is there is a new line here okay and that's why it prints on two lines so blah 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 new line it read new lines and all now it didn't do the second one because that was where I my print stopped the key thing is, it knows that when split works, this is white space, that space is white space, and the slash n is white space. 
So it knows that creative and and are two separate words, and it doesn't somehow put them together. So that's the nice thing about the split with no parameter doing what it knows to be white space. It will use new lines as white space as well, and that's quite nice. And if there's extra spaces, it just throws those away. All the features of sort of split with no parameter are very intelligent and very clever, and so it works very nicely in this situation because new lines are think thought of as white space and blanks are thought of as white space, and it really is exactly what you would want. I mean, it's exactly what you want. I mean, that's because humans wrote this stuff, and they thought, hmm, what would I want? So they wrote something that's what you want. So now we have, in effect, a whole file and a list of all the words in that file. Okay? So I'm going to take all this stuff out. I'm going to take all this stuff out. So now words is a list. And I'm going to say for word in words, I'm using word on purpose, print word, right? So that the, a slightly less mnemonic word. So I'll go back to the clown co, uh, clown.txt, and now I'm going to print out the words, right? So now my loop is going through the list one at a time and printing them out. Okay, so um, I am now going to make a dictionary. Uh, I'm going to call this cow equals dict ct to make an empty dictionary. Okay, so cow is a really unmnemonic version of counts, so we'll call them cow. Okay, so cow is our dictionary. And um, I'm going to do this the hard way first. I'm going to say um, if word, word up, in cow, then cow sub word is equal to cow sub word plus one. So if it's already there, we're going to add one to whatever's stored in the thing marked with word. Now word is not WRD, it's the and on and down and whatever. It's Word is a variable that contains these strings. Okay, But if it's not in there else, cow sub word is equal to 1. So that's like when we've seen the new person for the first time, we say, oh, we haven't seen you before, so we're going to set you to 1. Okay, And then I'm going to, just for yucks, I'm going to print Word, comma, cow of word. All right, so I'm going to, as we go through the loop, for each word, we're going to do this add or set to one, and then we'll just print it at the end of the loop, how many we've got so far. So let's run this now. Clown.txt. That didn't work so well because I didn't save it. So let's try that again. Clown. Let me clear my screen. I like Max because I can clear my screen so nicely. It keeps my sort of brain organized. Okay, so what we see here is we saw the word one, the, and we put it in the dictionary with one, clown, one, ran, one, after one. Now we've seen the, ooh, 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 let's make another thing to make this even clearer. Hang on. Print, adding. Print new word. Good thing I actually I'm gonna call this word up. So when I'm incrementing, I'm gonna say word up, and then I'm gonna say new word when I'm creating it. So I've just added a print in each of these just to really clarify what's going on, right? Word up. That means I'm incrementing it. I'm adding one to it. That's what word up means. Clown.txt. So here we go. So, oh, let's make this even cooler. Word up, comma, word. And now I can say, comma, word. Okay. So it saw the. Did a new word, its count is one, 
You saw a clown. <clears throat> and it's new, so it got a one. It saw ran. Ran's a one. After's a one. Ooh, now, the. The is word up. So we add one to it. So it's now a two, right? Car is brand new. And is new. Oh, we see the again. So now the goes to three. So you're incrementing when I say word up, and you're setting to one when I say new word. Yeah. So you get the picture. So by now we've seen the a bunch of times. We're adding one to the, and it's now five. So at the end of this, we're going to print COU. I'm going to do this cooler. Watch this. Word comma. And now I'm actually going to put the count on here. C O U W R D. And I'm put it after I set the count so it looks a little prettier. Check this out. It's going to be awesome. Word up. And I'm going to change this to just say word. And now I've got the print inside me if then else. And I'm going to say COU sub word. It's okay to make your debug output a little bit fun. So now, here we go. So I put I move my print into the if then else, and I print the word, whether I'm increasing it or not, and then how many it's after. And I do it, I do this after this line, so it's the uh, the word afterwards. And then I print the whole dictionary out. So this is going to be even awesomer. Okay, the word, the count is one, clown, uh, first word, 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 word. Oop, now here we saw the, and we did word up, so now it's two. Car, word is one, the, word up, now three. You get the picture? So every time we hit this if part, we do word up. If we hit the else part, we do word, okay? And at the end, we have all the words that have been upped and added, etc. Okay? So, enough of this debugging print. We don't need that. We don't need that. It was just fun. But just let's make sure that it still works. It does. Okay, now, <laughs> after all that, we are going to say, you know what? We don't actually need any of this crap because there is an idiom that basically deals with the fact that instead of a lookup, okay, so here's, so let's run this one real quick, right? It's like, hey, I want to just add one to it, and we will watch just how flat, fast this blows up. And that's because the, see, we're doing count word equal count word plus one. It's this count on the left side. It's blowing up, right? It's blowing up right here because the is not yet there. Well, that is what they made the get function. So it has this cool get. Now that's a method, so we're going to use parentheses. And we have to give it a default value. Get says look up word, whatever's in word, the, clown, whatever. And if it's not there, give me back a number. Well, we want to set it to 1 the first time. So if I return the number 0, then adding 1 to it will make it be 1. And so I can capture all of that if then else in one statement now. Clown dot text. Word up. Okay. So we use the get to do the lookup. It encapsulates that if then else that we just got done, got done read, writing. It is the if this exists, else give me back a zero. Okay. So here we go. We got ourselves a nice little happy guy. All right. So now we want to find the biggest one. Well, we're going to do a maximum loop. And so let's start by this and saying um, um, lurge equals none. We're going to use the none pattern. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, write a for loop that goes through. Well, let's let's not let's get rid of that. We'll come back to that. We're going to do k y y. Maybe not. We might do K-E-E, -E, 
and val in cow.items. All right, so I'm going to go through the items. Remember that, okay, let's just do cow. Dot, let's print cow.items here yuck, for yuckomatic. Uh, let me com comment this out for a second. Arr, don't do that. There we go. So let's run this one now. Clown.txt. Okay, so now we're printing a list of tuples. So each one is a tuple. And the way we can then write this for loop to get this cow item. So this whole thing here is cow items. It's a list of tuples. And we can basically make it so that the key and the val move through the list of items where key is and, val is three, then next iteration key is on, val is one, next iteration key is ran, val is two, dot, 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 dot. Okay? And so that's cool. I mean, it says this cow items is an, a list of two tuples, tuples with two items in it, two things in it, and we're going to give ourselves two iteration values. So just for Yuckomatic, we're just going to first, as we would, print out key and val, and then run that. So here we go. All right, we've got key and val, key and val, key and val. And it's in whatever order it feels like having this thing come out in. Okay, so um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, a variable called um, maxval. I'm going to set it to none, and I will say if maxval is equal to none, maxval. Marvel max val equals val. Now I'm using this. I'm using. Don't get too crazy. I am using the uh, contraction form of if here. So I'm not indenting. I'm just putting the one line because if max val is none, max val is the current value. And then I'm going to say if max val is less than val. And again, I'm doing this in order. I'm doing the check for none first. But once I've got it max val equals val. Okay, so this is, in a sense, my priming. We call this sort of a priming thing. So first time through the loop, we're going to grab the first value that we see, and then we are going to um, print uh, max val. Uh, we're going to check to see if we're going up, basically. If the current maximum is less than what we're looking at, let's grab it. And I'll just print out max val here, just for uh, yucks. Okay. Clown.txt. Okay, so we see and, and <laughs> the first max val is three, which kind of makes the thing boring. Uh, on is only one, which is not, so ran is two, nobody seems to be better than three, down is one, fell is one, the, ooh, the is seven, so we grab it, tent is two, so when we're all done. Okay, so then I'll just print out at the end, print out max val. So if I do this and type clown.txt, pow, we know that the, the best number is seven. But now what we want is we want to know what word it was. What is our best word? Well, so I'm just going to make another variable called max bird. And I'm going to make it none at the beginning of the loop. And I'm going to add, make this, make that be an indent. And at this moment where I'm capturing the maximum value, I'm just going to capture the maximum word as well. Max word. Equals key. Oh, wait a sec. I want to call this max key. So we have a really stupid, funny max key. So we've got key, which is the key, and then max key. And I'm going to print out max val and max key as well. And then I'm going to print out max key, comma max val. I'll put max key over here. And you'll see comma max val.
Ooh, it's not going to quite work. It's not going to quite work. But let's let let's let it not work, and then we'll see what we did wrong. It'll ultimately work, but it'll kind of be flawed. Clown.txt. Okay, so let me get rid of this count items line. Get rid of that. Make it clear. Okay, so here we go. We've got um, first time through. The word we're looking at is and, and the value for and is three, and max key is none. That's the maximum key we've seen, but we do have a maximum value, which means we've seen the largest is three. And why is that? Wait a sec. If the three is the largest and we just saw three, shouldn't this be and instead of none? And the problem is, is when we came through here and we hit this max val none, we set max val equal to val. And then we checked if max val was less than value to capture the key. So we weren't capturing the key. So a quick hack on this, and what the heck, we're not above quick hacks. So if I change this to less than or equal to, then when I set max val to val, it'll at least run this bit of code and then capture the key. So that's a quick way to do it. Close enough for government work. So now we fix the bug. Right? The bug is that we were capturing the max number, but we weren't capturing the max key. But now we are also capturing the max key. Now, in general, a more slightly more elegant way to do this is actually to just make this a, a guardian pattern with an or clause. If max val is equal to none, or, and I'll put this back to a less than, max val is less than val, then capture them. Right? So if we're in the, oh, get, get rid of the equal sign. Right? If max val is equal to none, or max val is less than value, capture them. Grab them. Now the output's going to be the same. But it will be pretty, it's more elegant code. Partly because we did it all in one if, and partly because we just don't have to look at our code to decide, oh, when that first thing runs, we got to get the second thing right. And so now at the end, we see the and seven, and uh, we are as good to go as you can be. And all we have to do before we turn in our assignment is comment out that little bit of debug. And away we go. Clown.txt, the seven. And what's my other file? Uh, words.txt. We just try to run it on a bigger file now. Words.txt. It's always safe. And it shows us 216. So um, here's our happy little program at the end. Let's take a look at this. We read the file. Oh, we open the file. We read the entire file, line after line, all the lines, including new lines. We split it into words. Conveniently, the new line counts as a space, because it's, it's white space. Then we make a simple dictionary counting loop to loop through the words we just split. And then we have a real simple maximum loop, where we capture both the maximum value and the maximum key. And then we simply print the maximum key out at the very end. OK, so I hope you uh, found this useful. And uh, see you in the next exercise.